Morning, everybody. Today is the 31st of December, 2023. Happy New Year's Eve and Happy New Year. I hope you have a prosperous and happy 2024. I'm planning on it. So the ground continues to dry up. It's still muddy, but at least the water's still receding. We'll see how long that lasts. The sun just poked out a little bit. That always helps, even on a cold day. It's in the mid to upper 30s, I think, right now. Um, so I'm going to check my power steering pump to see if my repair held or not. I hope it's going to be tight, but I can't wiggle it at all. I shouldn't be able to. And then I'm going to put my new connecting hose there on, and then I'm going to pour what I have left of my high pep transmission fluid in the reservoir. It's less than half a quart, but it's sufficient to determine whether this is going to leak or not. And assuming that it did hold, I will install the other strut rod on that side of the car, retighten my uh, sway bar, anti-sway bar bushings back down again. And uh, finally starting to inch closer to the end of all the work underneath the car. There's still a little bit more, but I'll try to put in the uh, uh, accelerator pedal linkage today too. I also have my old radiator sitting out here. This actually sat in my scrap pile, meaning to dispose of it for most of the summer. But I've spent so much money on this car, i got to find ways to cut back here. So I'm going to see if that radiator, the original one, leaks or not. Just filling it up with water and seeing if anything dribbles out of that. As long as it doesn't leak, just sitting here with no pressure on it, I think it should be good enough to do a test fire on the engine anyway. If it leaks, especially if it leaks significantly with no pressure on it, then I'm probably going to be forced to get another radiator sooner than I would have. Otherwise, I will eventually replace it. If, if this one, even if this one doesn't leak, I'll eventually replace it. But I'd like to get this one to hold on a little longer while I'm uh, at least getting the engine running for the first few times, then I'll be satisfied with that. Um, so that's my plan for right now. We'll see how things go. I'll show you what it looks like underneath here after I put my hose on and check for leaks and all that. Something else I wanted to point out, we got the engine. Besides the jack stands, and I admit I'm very nervous when I'm underneath that car, especially when I'm fully underneath it, like I was yesterday. So, anyway, that's a nod to him. Thank you for your concern for my safety. I've now uh, completed that hose installation underneath the car. I'm going to show it to you real quick. I've already put some transmission fluid back in the reservoir, too. So, let's hope there's no drips. All right, we're underneath the car now. Uh, you can see the new hose in place there with my new clamps. I tightened those babies down tight with a little ratchet. Not over tight. I didn't want to break them, but I want to make sure they do not leak and cannot leak. So, so far, things are looking pretty good. Uh, there's the offending fitting. I don't see any drops yet, so that's a good sign. And nothing on the other side either. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I really need to get some more transmission fluid though because that was less than half a quart I poured in the reservoir, but it should be sufficient to tell me if I'm gonna have leaks or not here. So I'm gonna ignore that for a little while while I go fill up my radiator with water. Let's see how that thing looks. Oh, here's the old radiator. Found a way to, to plug up the bottom end, but there are several leaks and this is just some Trying to put a garden hose in it. I scan at least three different places that it's leaking, so uh, I'm not gonna bother even trying to use this thing even for a temporary measure. And I discovered too that I only have, uh, I don't have any radiator hoses actually. I thought I had them both, but I'm missing one and the other one, which is this one is damaged. So, so I guess uh, a new radiator and uh, Upper and lower hoses are in order. I was hoping to avoid another expense like that, but unavoidable. So that'll be something I'm gonna go order here in a few minutes. I realized I had forgotten to put my earbuds in earlier, so sorry about the faded uh, audio on the first couple of clips there. Uh, it's now been about 20 minutes or so since I put this uh, back together. So I wanted to take another, another peek in here, see how things are looking. And so far, they're looking real good. I don't see any signs of drips at all. So that's uh, that's a very good sign. Yeah, it's all dry. I don't see anything coming from anywhere. And that's what I want to see. 
So now I feel a lot better about the power steering pump. I don't know if I zoomed in there or not. I didn't mean to if I did. No, I didn't. But anyway, so now, now that I'm satisfied with that, I will go ahead and put this other strut rod in and uh, get that taken care of and continue to finish things up underneath the car as best I can. All right, this is time for one of those embarrassing admissions, confessions. I screwed up. I thought, I was wondering why that thing was so crooked, you know, leaning to one side. Well, doofus me. I put the uh, strut rod link in the wrong hole. Put it in the hole that's meant for the uh, strut rod. I was wondering why I couldn't get the strut rod on there. So I feel pretty silly. So that explains why I fought that so much. I'm actually surprised I got it in at all. But anyway, so obviously I have to finish taking that nut off and letting that thing spring back up. Then I can get the strut rod in and then I can fight to get that back down where it belongs. So just, just being honest here. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes. I've made plenty of them. All right, I finally got the second strut rod installed. Now I haven't tightened down the uh, anti-spray bar link yet because it's so distorted right now. I don't want to uh, mess up those new bushings, so I'm going to compress the coil spraying by lifting up with a bottle jack again to take some of that pressure off, and then I'll tighten it down on both sides, and then that'll be done. But more importantly, I looked again under here, and I see zero evidence of any leaks at all anywhere for power steering, so I'm gonna call that a success and then continue on with uh, what I'm doing here. I'm gonna take a quick lunch break right now, so I'll see you after lunch. All right, I am completely done now with the uh, both the strut, rod, strut rods, bushings, and anti-sway bar and bushings and links. That's all on the car now, tight, everything is done. I've moved my bumper jack to the other, to the driver's side of the car, so I'll be under this part of the car now, add a little extra safety. So my next step here is finally to install the accelerator linkage here, put that back on, and the, uh, this is the kick down linkage here to put on. And I was just noticing this little uh, little bushing that's in here. This almost looks like the kind of bushing I needed in the, uh, the uh, shifter linkage down on the transmission. I don't think I've seen this particular style for sale anywhere, but it almost looks like it would work. But anyway... I've got a solution for that right now. So uh, this linkage is pretty simple. I just have to put this bracket uh, back on the firewall or back on the car body. Probably didn't need to take it off in the first place, but I was just trying to make sure I had lots of room to work down there when I was uh, doing the engine swap and all that. So I'll be under the car now. All right, I'm running into yet another issue. They just keep coming one after the other. What should have been a very simple process of installing the um, accelerator pedal linkage is anything but simple. It appears that Ford made a very slight design change between 66 and 67, uh, which I don't know why they would have done that, but they did. So this thing here is mounted on the side of the transmission, and it will only go in that far. It needs to go in quite a bit further, like all the way down here almost. Um, because I can't, uh, I can't push it against the transmission enough in order to mount it to this part, which mounts on the firewall, and that's not adjustable. I can't move this, you know, to the right in order to accommodate um, the difference. So I'm a little flummoxed. Not sure what I'm going to do. One idea I had was to find a drill bit that's just the right size to drill that bushing that's inside there out a little bit, drill it deeper. Uh, so that this will go in further. Um, and I, I really don't think I can move this bracket over to the right because of the way the the, uh, the little nuts are mounted in the firewall. They're not adjustable. So this is very strange. Um, so I'm going to have to think on that for a while and uh, see what I can do to figure it out. I don't know if this bushing inside is movable, if I can shove it down so it's the other end because I believe the spring is really supposed to be against this part because the bushing, I mean the, the linkage for the uh, gear shifter, that's where that uh, spring is. It's on that side, um, at least I think it is, so I don't know. That one I'm surprised I didn't have any trouble with, but this one... I don't know, I'll have to think on that one, see what I can do. It's a little frustrating because that's all these little things that take so much time. So, 
Um, I'm going to have to think on that for a minute, see what I can figure out. All right, yet another unorthodox solution. This is the uh, original bushing that was there. Since I had bought a set from Mark III Enterprises, I had extras, and I'm not using them all. So what I had to do is I took a drill, and I drilled out the end of a new one all the way so it's the same diameter as this on this side. So there's no longer a lip there. So that allowed me to force this all the way through like that. So now if I put it in the hole here where it belongs, I can actually get it all the way in and it stays. And it will it'll pivot around that, which is all I need. And it'll go in far enough now where I can get to the other side installed. So now I'm going to get back under the car before I lose the rest of my daylight and uh, try again. Hopefully that'll work. All right, you're looking at the, uh, all the linkage is finally done. That was such a pain in the butt. This is my jerry rig over here. I had to get a washer in there and a cotter key to keep the thing kind of pushed against the spring over here. I think the whole thing is backwards from the way it was designed on the 66. But I got it to work. It moves freely like it should. I think the gas pedal inside might be disconnected under the floor or something. I may have to look at that, but it is connected now. So I think finally done with the linkage and I'm tired. All this work for so little gain, but as I said before, everything I do is progress. So I'm going to wrap it up for the night. Take care.